Welcome to Accounting 2302, Principles of Managerial Accounting. I am Jay Simpson. I'm most likely your instructor for this course. Depending on the semester that you're taking this, we may or may not actually get to meet together and ever meet in person, but I do will be hearing from you through class and you'll be hearing through me uh, from me a lot through emails and announcements and discussion boards and Blackboard. So I wanted to go through and record a lecture or a, have a class, one-sided class discussion, if you will, just like we would if we were sitting in a regular classroom. So if you were sitting in my classroom on the first or second day of class, I would pull up these exact same PowerPoint slides. We would go through them. I would write on the PowerPoints and write on the board, just like I'm going to do on these slides. And you would hopefully be going through and listening and participating and asking questions and taking notes. So as you're watching these videos, of course, you can't raise your hand and ask a question immediately. But what I hope you'll do is you'll stop the video or pause the video and go to our Blackboard course and open up the discussion board and post your question right there in the discussion board. I'll be checking the discussion boards every day. Your classmates will be logging into Blackboard and they'll see that you've posted and we could posted a question or a comment and we can have those class discussions that way. Now, the other thing I hope you'll do is that you have printed off these note-taking handouts. So you'll notice in Blackboard that I've given you the link to the videos as well as a note-taking handout. These handouts I designed, they follow along exactly with my PowerPoints. And the idea is that you will fill in the notes, fill in the blanks as we go along. There's a lot of research that I won't go into right here, although I usually do go into it on the first day of class, that talks about how people learn. And one of the ways that most of us learn is really well is by handwriting information. In fact, research has shown that if you handwrite something, you're going to retain about 80% more of it than if you just read it, hear it, or see it. So I really want you to try to engage with the content, engage with the material as we go through the course. So I hope that you'll print those handouts off. And then as you go through the videos, you'll fill those in. As we get more further into the chapters, we'll have problems to work out. We're going to find that we have a lot of problems in managerial accounting and they can be pretty long and complex. I'll have set up the problem for you in the notes. Many times I'll have built a table that we're going to fill in together. So it's handy if you have those notes there. Now I know that some people want would prefer to type their notes and for some people, that is the best way to do it. If you're dysgraphic, then certainly typing your notes is better. But for most of us, the re research shows us that we, re we retain about 50% more information if we handwrite it than if we type it. So just keep that in mind. I really want you to learn to work smarter, not harder in this class. So if you will take the time to print the notes and handwrite them, that will save you some effort later on. That's less time that you have to spend studying. I realize you may not have access to a printer, um, but you'll have all of the notes there for the entire semester. So you could just download all of those to a, a jump drive, send them to Staples, a Kinko's, a FedEx even, and they'll print those for you. Black and white is perfectly fine, double-sided, and it won't cost very much as, at all, and you'll already have them printed for the entire semester. So really important, again, that you have those notes and that you're really engaging with the content as we go through it. So let's get started. Chapter one is really just an introduction to managerial accounting. By the time you've taken this class, you will have already taken Accounting 2301 or its equivalent if you started at another school. So that is a prereq to this course. So I want to first of all make sure that you have successfully completed Accounting 2301 Principles of Financial Accounting. We're picking up where we left off in 2301. So one of the, the things that we need to understand, and if you took my class for Accounting 2301, I talked about this a lot, and hopefully you came out of it with this understanding, that we tend to think accounting numbers as being very black and white. They are, it's a binary situation. You have money, you don't have money. 
But what we learned in Accounting 2301 is a lot of that financial data is based on estimates. And estimates are inherently gray and fuzzy. Um, they're not hard and fast. They're not facts. So we estimated what sales returns were going to be, and that gives us actual sales. Remember, sales are based on actual sales, not money received. So just because we sold $4 million worth of stuff doesn't mean that we received $4 million in cash. We record expenses when they are incurred, not necessarily when they are in are paid. So we're taking a lot of estimates. We're using our accounting judgment. We're making the very best estimate that we can, but those are still estimates. In managerial accounting, we're going to see this even more especially because managerial accounting, as we're going to see in the next couple of slides, has much more of a forward focus. We're much more making projections. So we've got to take all of this accounting data and use these estimates to make projections, to make good decisions about what we're going to do in the future. So managerial accounting is really focused on providing information for internal decision makers, for people inside the organization. So this would be the managers, the upper level executives, those sorts of people. For the vast majority of the information that we're going to use and do in this class, it's never going to be seen by anybody outside the organization. So we're never going to publish these managerial reports anywhere. They're going to stay in internal. Now remember in financial accounting, which was probably last semester, you focused on providing information to external decision makers. So we were really heavily focused on that annual report that we sent to all of our owners, our stockholders, our shareholders. Remember, even though they're owners of the corporation, they are considered outsiders, they're external users. We sent it to the government agencies, we sent it to our creditors, we posted it on our website for potential investors. So we were really focused on reporting information that had already happened to these stakeholders. Whereas managerial is focused on taking the information that we have, using it to make good decisions internally. So we're providing information that the managers need, that these internal decision, need, decision makers need to make good decisions internally. So I like this chart that's comparing financial and managerial accounting. So we've already talked about the first line of it, the primary users. Remember, in managerial accounting, we're again focused on these internal users. We're focused on helping the managers make those decisions for internal purposes. They're not looking at making decisions for investment purposes. If you I can draw your attention to the third line, one of the things I want to point out is that managerial accounting is very focused on the future. So we're taking this this accounting information, which has a historical bent to it. If you think about in, manage, in financial accounting, the annual report, the income statement reported what happened last year. The balance sheets reported what happened as of that particular day and time. The statement of cash flows reported what happened last year. So that all had a, a backwards focused. It was focused on the past. So in managerial accounting, we're going to take all of that backwards looking information, that historical information, in fact financial accountants are often called accounting historians, we're going to take that historical information and use it to make predictions, use it to make projections about the future. Now the good news is that because no one outside of the organization is ever going to see any of the reports or anything we do, we are not required to follow GAAP. I know somebody wants to stand up and shout woohoo. That doesn't mean you don't have to know GAAP because a lot of the things that we do will play into next year's financial statement and so we have to make sure that they are following GAAP as well. So we do still have to know GAAP but we don't have GAAP regulating our our reports that we're doing. If you think back to financial accounting, we produced one income statement for the entire company. So I always like to look at Disney's financial statement. And part of that is because I own Disney. I am a Disney stockholder. So I always like to say that I am legally a princess because I own Disney. But Disney has produces in their annual report one income statement for all of Disney. So that's all of the Disney theme parks. 
That's all of the Disney Studios. That's the Disney Channel. That's the Disney Movies. That's the Disney Stores where they sell all the the Disney toys and things. That's ABC, the TV channel that Disney owns. That's Disney Plus. That's ESPN, which is also owned by Disney. They just give you one income statement. They just give you one revenue number. They tell you this is how much revenue Disney made. But we don't know as outsiders how much of that revenue was from ESPN or how much of that revenue was from the Disney stores or how much of that revenue was ticket sales from Disneyland versus ticket sales from Disney World, we don't know that. We're only given aggregate or in the total information. Whereas internally, we know that Disney has that data. They just don't choose to release it. So managerial accounting, we're gonna take that aggregate data and it's broken down. So we'll know exactly how much revenue came from Disneyland, how much revenue came from ticket sales at Disneyland, how much revenue came from selling corn dogs at Disneyland. How much revenue came from selling popcorn at Disneyland? They've got it all broken down. In fact, they can tell you how much revenue they earned in one week in June versus one week in August. So we have all this internal data. So as managerial accounting, we're going to take this data and look at it in tiny parts and pieces. Um, maybe it, we're looking at the profit for a week or the profit for just one theme park or the profit even from just one show on the Disney Channel or something like that. And then there's a behavioral aspect, and we'll talk about this more, uh, more at the last unit that we're going to cover. But in financial accounting, we were concerned with how this information would affect our potential investors. So we talked a little bit in financial accounting about how, as financial accountants, we have a fiduciary duty to these external investors, to our owners, to our creditors, to our shareholders, to say, I need to give you all the information that you need to make a good decision about whether you should invest with us. And so we were concerned with how the information we provided would affect their decisions and we even talked about how we have to report that information if it is considered relevant if it would make a difference in their decision in managerial accounting we're really more focused on how this would affect employee behavior so we'll get into talking about how our compensation plans, do they actually incentivize our employees to work to the betterment of our company, or do they unintentionally disincentivize them? And we'll talk about those again as we get to that last unit more. So just like there is a CPA, a Certified Public Accountant, and that is governed by the AICPA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, there is a professional certification for managerial accountants. It is called a CMA, or a Certified Management Accountant, and that is governed by the Institute of Management Accountants, or the IMA. Now the IMA has set up some practices or some standards that they expect their management accountants to uphold. One is we should be competent, which means we should know what we're doing, right? We should act with confidentiality. We are going to be privy to a lot of insider information. We can't go around telling our brother-in-law at a dinner party or our friends what we're doing internally, what's going on with our company, because that could be considered insider trading. We have to act with integrity and we have to be credible. So when we go to our managers and we tell them these are the projections, they need to know that we're competent, that we know what we're doing, that we haven't tried to skew the numbers, that they can rely on the data that we are giving them. Is that 100% correct? No. It's estimates. Estimates by their very nature are not 100% correct, but we are acting with credibility and integrity.